good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Thomas, and welcome to Grace Church in our inaugural service of having the chapel worship online. Here's how I want you to picture this. Today, wherever we are, we're gathering together digitally. But even more, more importantly, we can remember that today we are gathering by the Spirit and in truth as we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Would you bow with me as we pray? Lord God, today we want to be God-focused. We want to be God-centered. It's so easy in these days, everything that we read, everything people are talking about, we're talking about what other people think is happening. We talk about what other people are doing or not doing. And so many times we're talking about what other people are talking about. And Lord, today, we just want to be focused on you and say to God, be the glory. Great things he has done. We glorify you today in Jesus' name, amen. rejoice. Let's rejoice together reading this scripture. I invite you to read this aloud with us. Praise Praise the Lord. Lord. 
I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty is his work. His righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. He has shown his people the power of his works. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. people can gladly forever adore him. Let that amen resound from his people again. And what I have loved is that his praise has not ceased. Even though churches looked very different these past weeks during quarantine, this week we get to open the doors of Grace Church in Achaska they're meeting and in the auditorium they're meeting and here in the chapel we are throwing wide open the digital doors of the chapel so I do welcome each and every one of you so glad that you are able to join us uh, here today because the reality is I think of what Jesus said when he met the woman not in the temple or in the synagogue, but he just met her at a well in John 4. And she realized there was something special about this Jesus, so she actually asked, because she came from one walk of, of life where they always worshiped in, on Mount Gerizim. 
And but he she knew that Jesus was a Jew. He worshiped in Jerusalem and, and she was like, so so really, where do we need to worship? You know what his answer was? If I could summarize it, he basically said, you know what? It's not really about where you worship. It's about who you worship that you worship the one true God truly in spirit and in truth. And I love that in these days, those connections are still happening. So what we're doing, we are streaming. You have made it into the chapel this morning at nine o'clock and eleven o'clock. We will be here each and every Sunday, and we will be meeting together in a way that is wise and safe as we think about how to love our people. We want to do that uh, being very considerate of the fact that so many of our people in the chapel are just in a demographic that would be high risk, that would be susceptible, and and really should not be getting together uh, right now. But in these days, even though we're quarantined, we don't want to be isolated. We want to be intentional. I encourage you, be intentional to be reaching out to people. And I want, I want you to know how encouraged that I am. The leadership of Grace Church and so many around here have been intentional. And I've realized afresh how much uh, the leadership of the church values those who, who worship in the chapel and really want to love them well in a way that would allow them to gather together digitally so we can gather together safely in Jesus' name. And I want to let you know also that because we've started this, even in these hard days of quarantine, that this is one of the many things that God is working together for good because we want to keep these digital doors open. We want to keep streaming online uh, in the days and weeks and months and Lord willing, years ahead where this will be a new reality. Because you know what? My heart is full today, even though I'm looking out at a bunch of empty chairs, and that feels really different. But the potential of reaching all kinds of people and taking Grace Church to people that could not come to Grace Church Chapel, even as I look at these these seats out here, I think just right over here, people like Gary and Betty Pog would sit right there and, and then you, you'd even have uh, Bruce and Mary Jane Wheaton and their whole family right here. But even before quarantine happened, the reality is those couples and so many others, it just is impossible for, for them to make it in this room. And God has made it possible for us to make it to them, that we can gather together. So I want to sing a song that's special because the first Sunday that we did not meet together, March 15th, we were going to sing this song as we gather. May your spirit work within us. And then we could not gather the way we normally did. So I want to bring it in today and just pray over this time this morning, but even the ministry that we have ahead of us, that as we gather digitally, that His Spirit would work within us. Ladies, would you get us started on this song? Let this be our prayer today. i yeah. 
just pray over each of us involved in this service today, wherever we are, that we would gather in your name and that you would work in our hearts, in our spirits, by your spirit, such that we would never be the same, that we would be continually conformed to your image, that we would be continually living for your purposes, for your glory. Lord, come and work in us. Even this morning we pray. Sing this. I thank you that you meet us here. You make us, you who made us alive in you, Lord, come, revive us, revitalize us even today. I invite you to sing this hymn with us. Revive us, O oh Lord. that you would revive us. We're in all kinds of places, not just geographically, but Lord, just in our lives, we're in all kinds of places, but yet worship is not about our place. It's about your person. 
So we pray that you would come, light a fire in us, revive us again here on this Pentecost Sunday. Lord, I pray that your fire, your vitality, your spirit, and your glory would so come upon us that your temple would be filled with your glory because your temple is not some building at some address. Your temple is your people who have given you their hearts. And your temple is your church spread throughout this land. And Lord, as you come upon us and you work within us, we will go out for you by your power and for your glory. So Lord, work that in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's too good to see you. You can be seated. You can be seated. So uh, I've been by myself for such a long time that, uh, that I almost said, like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> like, what are you, like, what are you doing here today? It's just not the same without you. It's not the same without you. So, man, welcome. Welcome back. I hope, I hope that we do not take the freedom that we have to gather together and worship for granted ever again, right? Like, if it's taken away, man, like, we, we miss it. And I will tell you, there is nothing more awkward than walking in here and staring at two cameras for 40 minutes and, and acting like you're paying attention, because I know what you're doing in your kitchens. You're in your kitchens, you're eating. I kept having this image of Bob Coughlin in a bathrobe, and I couldn't get that image out of my head, and so it was just really tough. And then I'm, I kind of fall into funny. Like, I, I can't script funny. I kind of fall into it. And then you're kind of off balance because you don't know if you're funny or if you're not funny. And so I've been like, this funny, I don't know if it's landed or not. So it's just so good to have human beings back in this place. So good. So I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you. Certainly want to welcome everyone at our Chaska campus, uh, our chapel, right? They're watching online today and certainly our online family. Man, we are so grateful for you. Now, for obvious, for obvious reasons, I have decided to, uh, to pivot on, to punt on the message uh, that I had written for today. And so, like, this is literally, like, like, hot off the press, so if it's not any good, it's because I put, like, three hours worth of work into it starting yesterday. But I just, like, like I had the message, and I thought, well, I could just go ahead and do it. But then I'm like, there's so much going on. And, so much chaos and confusion and hurt and anger. So I thought, man, we need to see what the Word has to say about all that. Let's let the Word speak to us and, and comfort us and challenge us and inspire us today. And so that's what I want to do. I, I, I want to kind of look at the state of affairs in, in our community and in our nation and then kind of apply the gospel to it, kind of get a word from the Word. And I would say this, like as a, as a, as a church, as a, as a community, as a, as a country, there is a rightness, there is a rightness uh, in the grief, in the pain, in the anger, in the, in the protest that, that we feel over, over the death of, of George Floyd. But honestly, and you know, you know my background, I kind of come out of the criminal justice world, was probation officer for several years. My brother is a police officer, police officer right now in Indianapolis. But honestly, I'll, I'll say this to you, I don't know that I've ever been so, like, so enraged and disturbed and just plain heartbroken over something, just, just kind of the visual of a white police officer holding down a black man with his knee on his neck for almost nine, nine minutes was and, and is like un, unspeakable. It's, it's evil, right? And, and we know that racism is evil, right? That, that, the, that the heart of man is deceitful and sinful and that we would think that based on the color of our skin that we're somehow better than someone else, the root and core of that is just, is just evil. We know murder is, is evil. So I think we have a lot of like pent up rage and and angst and anger in our 
in our culture today, Christians and certainly non-Christians, right? And so I want you to know that the Bible, the Bible does address this, this topic of this concept of hate. Uh, the Bible actually says that, that you can hate, can hate people, but you, you, can, you can hate evil. And I would say this, as a matter of fact, you, you should, you should hate evil evil, right? It, it, the Bible says this, that evil should never be called good or, or good called evil. Evil should never be embraced or accepted or promoted or tolerated. And so, and so Paul, the Apostle Paul, really, really helps us here in Romans 12. Now, if you want to go ahead and turn to, to Romans 12, we're kind of camp out there and bounce around a little bit, but be primarily in Romans 12. Paul, Paul says this, Romans 12 verse 9. He says, let, let love be genuine. Let love be genuine. Let love be sincere. Let it be pure-hearted. And then he says, abhor what is evil. Literally translated, hate what is evil. And then he says, hold fast to what is good. And so what Paul does is he gives us three, three statements that are to be tied together as, as one thought. So three statements that literally tie together as kind of one thought. And so you got to get the flow of it, all right? Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good. And the flow of that is hugely important because the, the, nuance, the nuance here for Christ followers is that our hate is, is not driven or governed by our hate. And so you need to hear me, like I'm not advocating hate for the sake of hate. And, and I'm saying here that the Bible says that our hate is not to be driven by or governed by our hate, but rather by our love. So our, our love for George Floyd, our love for people of, of color, our love for the least of these, our love for life, our love for the gospel. And so here's what Paul says. Paul actually says that love gives us clarity on what and how we are to hate. Not who, but what and how we are to hate. And so let me be really, really clear. If love doesn't guide your hate, hate will guide your hate, and your hatred will lead you towards murder or murder in your heart, as Jesus speaks of in the Sermon on the Mount. And right, we all know this, right? The last thing the world needs is another hater. Amen? Like the last thing the world needs is another hater. We need lovers and not haters. And so we, we need people who know how to hate well because they love much. Does that, does that make sense? I haven't been able to get any audience participation in a long time. Give me the kind of a, yes and yes. Okay. There are humans. It's so nice to be back. So good. You can lose your mojo when you're up here by yourself, right? And, and the truth of the matter is this, and you, you know this, right? You, you can tell a lot about a person based on what they hate. And you can tell a lot about a person based on what they love. And so here's the challenge for us. In times like these, right? Check your motivations here. Check your heart here. Don't let hatred take root in your life or it will take over every single relationship. And so I would summarize like this. Love deeply so you know how to hate rightly. And you never hate people. We always, we hate, we hate what is, is evil. Uh, secondly, Paul says in, in verse 10 that we are to love each other like family. Look at verse 10. Look at what he says. I love how he says this. Love one another with brotherly affection. And then look at this next phrase. Outdo one another. One up each other in showing honor. And so in the church, we are to, we are to love each other like, like family. So let me, just, let me just kind of address this, okay? Especially based on what's going on in our culture. If there is a person of color who's, who's really aggrieved about this in a way that, 
that you don't understand or comprehend or you, or you can't understand or comprehend, the Bible would say, see them, like see them. See them as hurting, see them as a hurting brother or sister who needs to be acknowledged and heard. The Bible would say, show them affection, show them, show them honor, make it your aim to outdo them in caring, outdo them in loving, outdo them in showing honor. Because here's, here's what I see right now in, in our country, in our culture. Right now, the enemy is trying to like shred us and tear us apart by creating a deep-seated prejudice over the shade of our skin over the shade of our skin, but God is trying to pull us together by calling us family. The enemy is trying to tear us apart. God is trying to pull us together by calling us family, brothers and sisters. And what do you know about families? Yeah, they're funky. Every family's funky. How many of you have had a little bit of funk going on the past few weeks as you got really up close and personal as a family? You're like, we have seen each other and we know each other in unique ways in this, this quarantine season that we're in, like everybody's just like all over each other. I thought I could be a really godly person if I didn't have a family, but it makes it really, really hard, right? And so I get all that, but here's what we know. Families love each other, right? Families love each other. Families talk to each other. Families endure, families endure. Families, listen to this, families don't let outside forces drive a wedge. Families don't let outside forces drive a wedge. Families don't let enemies in their house. And I'm telling you, there's an enemy trying to get into this house and to divide us up and to tear us apart. And God's like, no, 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 no. Come together, pull together as family. So, so love well, right? Love well. Love like family. Number three, listen closely before you speak loudly. Listen closely before you speak loudly. I thought about calling this point, this, this thought, Jesus can read your social media. So please hear me. I'm not saying don't speak up. I'm not saying don't speak out. I'm saying what the Bible says. James 1.19 says this, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. Right now, it's the exact opposite of James 1.19. People are slow to listen, quick to speak, and quick to become angry. And, and, and again, listen, I think what happened this week warrants anger. And the Bible says, right, we can be angry and not sin. That's, that's not the point. But biblically, listen, biblically, Christians have to be different. And so we, we are living, like, like some social commentators are saying, we are living in the age of outrage. And that's before all that's happened. And so as we live in this age of outrage, let me just say this. We don't have to be the first ones to say something in social media. We have to be the first ones to say something true and gracious and thoughtful of other people. So don't feel like, man, something happened, I got to just yell. No, no, no. You can be the first one to say something, but make, it, make sure it's true. Make sure it's loving. Make sure it's, it's gracious and thoughtful. I, I, think, I think there's a lesson for us. We have got to learn to communicate in a way that pushes for a conversation. Sometimes we communicate in ways that shut down conversation. And so, obviously, I get a lot of emails, and a lot of people have had a lot of strong opinions about my leadership or lack thereof for some people, right? You know, you're a coward. Open the church. You know, open the church in March. Don't shut it down. I mean, I've, like I have heard everything. 
like everything. And here's always my response. Ask me questions, don't make assumptions. Ask me questions, don't make assumptions. You don't know what I've been doing or not doing, so ask me questions, don't make assumptions. And so when we're talking, we need to talk to people for sure, but don't talk down to people. And so currently, here's what I see. Every, everyone, is, everyone is just like, we're, we're going we're gonna to establish our position. So let me say this. As you state your position on things, Remember your disposition. As you state your position, remember your disposition. Your disposition is your demeanor. It's what you say. It's how you say it. It's even, it's even why you say it. And so if someone dislikes me because of my position, that's okay. But someone should never dislike me because of my disposition. And so I'm going to read you just a few statements from social media accounts of people who attend Grace that I think are, that are way off. Are you, are you, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to tell you. You're like, oh my gosh, like what? Where are the exits? How do I get out of here? But I got you. So love well, love deeply, listen intently, listen intently. Fourth, let the word, not your instinct, guide your response. Look in Romans 12, verse 17. So I did, a, uh, I did a, an interview this, this week uh, on Faith Radio with Susie Larson. She's, she's great. She's fantastic. So she asked me this question. She's like, uh, so like what, what passage are you in like and has been speaking to you and especially with all this going on in our, in our community? And I said this one right here, Romans, Romans 12, verse 17. Look what it says. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves. But leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you'll heap burning coals on his head. And then look at verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Would you say that with me? Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. In verse 17, let me tell you what Paul says. Paul says that when evil happens... And you decide that you're going to repay evil with more evil, some of what we're seeing, lawlessness, violence, destruction, all you do is open the door for more evil, not justice. And then these, these evil acts create more injustice, not less. And so now you see all kinds of injustice for, for business owners, right, others who've lost property, life. And so... Paul says, repay no one evil for evil. And then he says, verse 17, be careful to do what is honorable in the sight of all. And so I, here's a good word for us, right? Don't just do what you want. Do what's right. Do what's right. So don't just respond with your instincts. Because revenge would be everyone's instinct. Don't just do what you want, do what is right. In verse 18, he says, do everything you can to live at peace with everyone. Like followers of Jesus Christ, we, we promote peace, right? We're peacemakers. We take peace seriously. Verse 19, never avenge yourselves. So don't take revenge. Why? Why? Look at what it says. Because you want to leave room. For what? For God's wrath. What's that mean? So Paul says, Paul says that taking revenge, when you go ahead and take matters into your own hands, it suggests that you don't believe or think that God's going to do something. You don't think God's going to show up. You don't think God cares about justice. Well, God cares more about justice than you do. He cares more about justice than I do. And so God says it's mine to avenge. And so we know that God does justice perfectly and fairly. So what is our response then? Verse, verse 20. Our response is to bless. If your enemy, think how hard this is, by the way. If your enemy's hungry, what? Starve him. No, feed him. If your enemy's thirsty, give him something to drink. And in doing this, you will heap burning coals on his his head. I think a lot, a lot of people take that little phrase to mean, 
you'll, you'll burn them down with shame. That's not what it means. Like it doesn't even fit the flow or the context of this passage here. It means if, if you overwhelm people with goodness and grace, then goodness and grace changes them and shows them there's another pathway. And as the church of Jesus Christ, we need to help show people there is another path. There is another pathway. And then finally, verse 21 says this, don't be overcome with evil. And so, and so listen, repaying evil for evil only leads to being overcome by evil. So here's the thing about evil. Evil will take you down. Evil will hunt you down. Evil will control you. Evil will control your every thought. Evil will consume you. So what do you do? You overcome evil by what? By doing good. So we're going to do that today. We're going to do that together today. We're going to pray together today. We're going to ask God to do good through us. Ask God to do good through his church locally and globally. And I think, man, if there's ever like a driving force for us to share the gospel like now would be it like now would be the time right the only thing that that changes people is when God does a work in their heart and he replaces a heart of stone and gives people a heart of flesh that's why we share the gospel of of Jesus Christ and then we know that man when one person is changed right that can change a home then that one home makes an impact in a neighborhood. Then that one neighborhood makes an impact in a community. And on and on and on it goes. And so today's Pentecost Sunday. You know what happened on Pentecost Sunday? The Spirit of God fell and descended and filled the apostles and those first century Christians. And so here's what I want us to do. I want us just to, like, be quiet together. Um. A lot of noise, a lot of chaos. And I want us just to like quiet our hearts, be still and be silent. Then I'm going to lead us through some kind of prayer points here. And we're going to pray together and then a few things left as we close. But let's, let's bow before the Lord. Let's pray for George Floyd's family. Let's pray for them right now. Let's pray that God would do good and overwhelm evil by using this tragedy to end hatred and prejudice and racism and evil in our midst. Let's ask God to do that. Let's pray for our city right now. Let's pray for Governor Walls right now. Let's pray for our community to come together and rebuild. Let's pray for financial provision for those who've lost so much. Let's pray for change. Let's pray that our hearts would change. Let's 
So if there's areas where you need to confess and repent, do it. Come clean. Let's pray for changes in our political and financial and criminal justice systems. Let's pray for changes. We would see equity, fairness with people. Let's pray for changes in the way that we think about each other and treat each other. And let's pray, let's pray for healing. Let's pray for uh, people of color who are wounded and don't feel heard or loved or valued. Just pray for them. And let's pray for justice to be served. That God would do justice through his people. So God, today we want to be a force for the gospel by doing good in the name of Jesus. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's what we want to, we want to do today. We want to, on your behalf, Grace Church, we, uh, we have a connection with uh, Pastor Steve Harrison and Jake Sullivan, have a relationship they've built with a uh, a pastor in the city, the inner city, uh, 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 Christ International Church. It's actually on Lake Street. The pastor's name is Daryl Geddes Sr. And so on your behalf, we are going to give them a, uh, a check for $10,000 today to bless them, encourage them, and let them know that, like, we just want to help. We just want to help. And then they've actually, they've actually come up with a list of items that uh, they think will be really, really valuable in ministering to the needs of our community. So we're going to put that list up. So you're going to take a picture of that. We'll also put it online for you to track it down later. So here's what we're going to need you to do. If you can grab some of those items, those household items, uh, and then bring them to the church, and we'll get that all set up. We'll, we'll make it clean and clear for you, kind of next step. Uh, bring those items to the church, then we're going to take a truck down there to them on Wednesday and deliver these, these goods, these gifts on, on your behalf. So we want to we do good. We want to make a difference, and we, we want to extend the gospel, and we want to partner with a church that's right down there in Lake Street who's on the front lines, and anything we can do to bless them, help them, encourage them as the church of Jesus Christ, we want to do that. Amen. So that's, that's from you. That's from you. So thank you. Really appreciate you. So, so here's what we're going to do. Pastor Brian is going to come. He's going to talk about two things, giving and leaving. And then Pastor Ian's going to kind of come forward now in the Chassa campus. He's going to do the same thing. So if you just kind of stay put for a moment here as we kind of wrap it up here today. Amen. Amen. Just as... Pastor Troy was praying, I heard, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, and he has blessed us so that we can bless others. Grace Church, you continue to be faithful. You continue to be generous. God has been good to us, and so thank you for whatever you're going to do uh, for our brothers and sisters downtown. Grace.church slash hope. Grace.church slash hope if you want to find out where to take those donations and get more information about how you can become a part of that ministry for downtown. So your giving allows us to continue to move forward and impact our city across the street and around the world. So donations will be received, will be received right here in Eden Prairie and also out at Chaska. So go to grace.church slash hope for drop-off times. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your continued obedience. Um, I've been watching you online for the last six, eight months, or six, eight weeks, feels like six or eight months, 
and uh, been on the chat there and I've uh, had the chance to really keep connected with so many of you. You've been connecting to Grace Church. Thank you for your faithful giving. You can still give. Uh, this is the last Sunday of our fiscal year. And you have been faithful through the whole year, and we're trusting God, and we're anticipating that we're actually going to be on track for budget this year, and that is huge, you guys. So thank you for that. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness. So, uh, you know, normally we, we take an offering, we pass the bucket, and you can also give online and so forth. No passing the bucket, at least for now, and who knows for how long. So the ushers will be at the door here in the auditorium. The ushers will be at the door out in Chaska, and they've got some buckets there. So if you want to participate in giving today, you can participate in that way. You can also give on the Grace Church app, and you can also give online by going to grace.church slash give. Let's pray, and I'm going to say amen. And Pastor Ian's going to come in Chaska, and he's going to dismiss you, and then we're going to dismiss here as well, row by row, section by section. All right? Let's pray together. Father God, we do love you and we thank you for the way that you have blessed us. We thank you, God, for your grace and mercy with us, your patience with us. Thank you for another day to change a little bit more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the message we've heard today. Help us to leave here today, not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word doing good for your name's sake. We pray it in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen.